Dr. M.B. Sorevasan sir received his uh, Bachelor of Science and Master of Science in the Department of Computer Science and Engineering from Bangladesh University of Engineering and Technology, Buet. Uh, he, he also obtained his PhD degree from the School of Computer Science at the University of Oklahoma, USA. Uh, currently, he is serving as a professor in the Department of Computer Science and Engineering at Buet. His research interests include uh, mobile malware detection, computer network, cybersecurity, software defined networking, security of mobile and ad hoc networks and internet of things. Uh, so far, he has already published more than 90 technical research paper during his research career. Uh, so now I'd like to request Professor Dr. M. B. Sarabhasan sir to conduct to the webinar course on uh, VLAN, virtual local area network. Uh, so sir, you can now start. Uh, start. Thank you for the nice introduction. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, sir. Okay. So uh, let me share my screen. Uh, can you see? Can you see the screen? Uh, yes. Okay. So this is uh, Professor Dr. Sora Bhutan. Uh, I am a professor of the CSC department, Buet. So today we, uh, we are going to learn about virtual lab. So you all might have learned, uh, you, have my, you know the lab, right? Local area network, but you may not know virtual lab. Uh, any idea of what is the virtual lab? Have you heard about it? Anybody? So we are going to le learn today what is VLAN. So, so this is my outline. Uh, we'll first try to understand what is virtual lab and then how it is beneficial to us and then uh, how to configure VLAN. Uh, so we, we learn a lot of things, but uh, you may not understand it a little bit. Uh, so I'm going to the details. Can you see this, right? Virtual lab. And so normally a single lab is, is in the same room. Say, say one room, you have virtual lab. So you have one room in the, the third floor. So normally lab is in the same floor or same, same room. But for virtual land, virtual land can be in different floors. You see, there are three floors, first floor, second floor, third floor. And three of these pieces, this PC and this pieces and this pieces are belong to the same land, which is IT land. And these three pieces, or these three uh, colored pieces are in the HR land. And this is in the other land, which is sales land. So the point is that PC, this PC in the third floor, they are connected to the same switch, but they belong to different VLANs. So can you see this, right? So let me explain. Yeah. So let me explain so that you can understand clearly. So my point is that the, the PC, this PC, this PC, and this PC, they, they are connected to the same switch, which is this switch. So this is the switch. But these three PCs are, are not from the same lab. They are from three different IPCs. One is 10.0.0, .0, .0 2.0. You see, 10.0.2. The next one is 10.0.3 network, and then the third one is 10.0.4 network. So that means we are having 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 uh, having having PC of different land connect to the same switch. So this is the concept of virtual land. So why do we need this? We need to have virtual land so that we can we can we can allow people from different department in the same room or same uh, same facility, 
but they belong to different uh, departments like IT, HR, sales, or something like that. So this is the main concept. So why why do we need such arrangement? Any idea? So the benefit is if we can if we want to see if we want to sometimes it is necessary to uh, have uh, people sitting on the same room but they belong to different departments and yet they are not in the same land so they are in different pillars in that case we can ensure security we can we can uh, reduce the cost otherwise we will need three three switches instead of one switches in the third floor we will need three switches if we don't have pillars, three pillars. So, so this reduces our cost and this ensures uh, security because the data between the uh, between the lands will be segregated. We'll see in the, in the next few plus slides. So better performance and, and we'll see the uh, uh, broadcast domain will be shrinked that means the broadcast demand will be will be will be will be less so uh, the broadcast will not hamper the other pcs in the in the other land and also we can have it people in different floors who can serve people uh, id need efficiently so this is uh, three different objective so so this is this is a VLAN. Uh, how can we divide the broadcast domain? So if we have VLANs in different, uh, so it will it will it will divide the broadcast domain. So how does uh, how how it is done? You see this one. When someone broadcasts, it will not go to the other PCs in the same land. It will go only to the only to the only to the PCs of the same IT department PC. So if I have a broadcast here then this pc will not hamper this hr pc and also the sales pc so it will only go to the pcs that belongs to the it lab so this is the benefit so we have reduced number of uh, or, or 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 smaller broadcast domain so this is one point <clears throat> and the next is types of VLAN. so what is what are the different types of VLAN? You can write it down. We have data VLAN. The next one is default VLAN. And we have two other VLANs, which is native VLAN and management VLAN. So what is data VLAN? We, as we have already seen uh, from this one. So we have we have three different VLAN, right? This one is IT VLAN, this is HR VLAN, and this is sales VLAN. So these are actually data VLAN, but we need we need one VLAN. We will see in the in the in the, in, in each switch. As I can show you here, we have a, we have a we have a network setup here. So if we if we, you can see the figure, right? Can you see this this topology? We have two switches. You see this one. So we have two switches, and if we can go, do you know this topology, right? Any idea? Hello. Can I hear you better now? Hello. Hello. Yes, yes, sir. Can you listen to us? Yes, yes. Yes, we are hearing you uh, better than previous. But uh, uh, why the student is not responding to the teacher? I'm not mm -hmm. sure. Uh, actually, uh, sir, actually, uh, there are uh, huge participant. Uh, huge participant for this region. We uh, mute all of the participant. They can uh, okay, uh, okay, uh, okay, uh, okay. submit their question uh, in chat box. Okay, fine, fine, fine. Okay, fine. Okay. So this is this is one switch I want to show you so that you can easily understand. So you see this is a switch and this is packet tracer. I think you all know. So if we go into the switch and then we have a command show VLAN brief. What is what does it do? I, I'll explain a little bit later on. But we can see here 
you see this is a command show villain brief so you can write the command uh, i have all these commands written here also so i'm writing this command to know what is going on so show villain brief will show what are the villains available so as you can see we have a villain one you see it is villain one and this is a switch which has how many ports we have 24 ports if it's 0 by 1 to if it's 0 by 24 and then two uh, uplinks uh, ports which are actually uh, uplinks so you can see from here like this is a switch we have 24 ports here 12 port 12 port and then we have two more ports which is uplink gigabit gigabit 0 by 1 and then gigabit 0 by all these ports are actually let me show you again so all these all these ports initially belong to the same vlan which is default vlan so this is what i was trying to say this is what i was trying to say here we have default vlan you see that and this is default vlan vlan one so initially every port of a switch belongs to this vlan which is default vlan and we can we can we will create few vlan just like it vlan sales vlan and this will be called data vlan so these are the main two vlans but there are other vlans management vlans so what are, what is meant by management vlan let me let me explain here so we can see there are two switches right so do you think we should use the same IP address series for the switch and for the someone raised hand, right? Any question? Is it chat disabled or chat is enabled? No. Uh, chat disabled, sir, but the question answer box is enabled. Uh, so, so you can ask any... question. So uh, I think. If you have any question, please ask question. We will answer. Uh, chat is disabled. Someone is saying chat is disabled. So yes, yeah, sir. write the question in the question answer. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, anyone can actually answer. Uh, do you think uh, they can open their mic, right? So it would be better if they can ask question. Do you think it would be a problem? Sir, a student can uh, student or participant can raise their hands or put their question in the question answer box and we will answer or after the session we can answer okay. their somebody hands. somebody raise the hand let, 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 let us answer few questions because uh, yeah it, it will be better to answer their question earlier than just in the at the very last so abdul rahman i think he wants to uh, have abdul a rahman, question. you can question now i already unmute you Abdul Rahman, Mr. Abdul Rahman, please ask me a question. Hello. Abdul Rahman, is he available? Nobody. I already unmuted him, but no question. I think you can write down in the question answer box, Abdul Rahman. Okay, so let me show you again. So initially, again, I, I'm showing you the physical structure of a switch. You see this? So we have, we have, uh, we can zoom also. We have a switch, right? And as you can see, there are, there are 24 ports here and there are two other ports. So this one is actually switch. And we can have, we can have ports for different villains. I'll, I'll show you it in a minute. So here are, uh, so, so, so we, we have just talked about this. I'll talk about the management villain and native villain later on. So native villain and management villain. So what I was trying to say, I was trying to say about management villain. So let me explain one thing. You see this figure, right? So all these PCs are different villains, but so we have to consider switches also, right? So these three switches, you see this switch, this three switch and this switch, all these switches can have another LAN. So we can have a LAN, 
but we can have a, we can have a VLAN for switches. What do you think? If we can have switches uh, and we if we have a LAN, say VLAN 99, or say say switches, so this 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 switch will have say is actually a LAN which is used for management purposes. That's why we say we have a VLAN. We can have a VLAN which is used for management purposes. So. So these three switches can have another LAN, these four switches actually. So these four switches can have another LAN, which is management VLAN. And this is what we are going to uh, mention here, used for management VLAN, which is basically switches or routers. So we'll come back to native VLAN later on. So let, let me let me go for that. So as you can see, I already showed you, this is villain one. Initially, we, we have only one villain, which which uh, which have all the ports. But later on, we can move these ports to different villains. Eh? So, so I'll show you. So, so you see this, right? Any question? There is no Sorry. question, not yet. Okay. So, so this is what we have seen. All ports initially are assigned to VLAN 1. By default, native VLAN is normally by default 1. Management VLAN is also by default 1, but we can change the management VLAN, I'll explain. So there are another thing. We can have VLAN, access VLAN, and we can have data VLAN. So let me show you this figure somewhere here. Let me explain this figure, okay. So you see this figure. So we have a we have a we have a switch here. So we have we have villain ten and we have another villain. Okay. So we have two villains. Villain ten and then villain twenty. Can you see these two? So actually we have two villains. One is villain. I, 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 let me write it down. Villain ten already written here. So this is VLAN 10, this is VLAN 10. So, let me see the figure. I, I'll request you to draw the figure. If you are, if you are following me, just draw this, draw this figure. <clears throat> is, it, is it visible? Is visible, right? So we'll work on this topology, which which will help us understand. So we have. Let me explain. We have we have two switches. This one, switch one. You see this one, switch one, and then we have another switch, switch two. So we have we have VLAN ten. We have a PC, and then we have another PC one, which is actually which belongs to VLAN twenty. So you can check the IP series. This one is 192.168.10.10, and this is 192.168.20.10. So, so you see, this is 10 network, this is 20 network, and this is actually two different VLANs connected to this piece. Similar is the scenario here. You see, this is another switch, switch two. You see this one, switch two, and that we have one PC, PC two is connected to VLAN 10, and then another PC, PC three, which is VLAN. 20 belongs to VLAN 20. So similar thing, VLAN 10, VLAN 20 here, and then here, VLAN 10, VLAN 20. So this is a very simple topology, which we can easily understand that one switch, this switch have two VLANs. One is VLAN 10, another is VLAN 20. So any question on this topology? We'll, we'll, we'll go forward from this topology. It's still no question. There is a question. By net, native, uh, by default, native VLAN and management VLAN is v, uh, VLAN one. Why it is named differently? Okay, so actually it should be different. So normally, uh, by default, one VLAN one is actually default VLAN, and also it is management VLAN, and also it is native VLAN. So it is just the beginning. So initially, when you start, they don't they don't distinguish between these three. Initially, everything is villain one. Like different villain is one, management villain is one, and also the native villain is one. But normally, we should not keep it. For example, if you buy a router, you, you I think uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Mr. Rinchen from Bhutan, 
So if you buy a wireless router, you will see the router has no password, right? Wi-Fi is free, like open password. So then we, we configure our SSID and then we can we configure the password so that nobody can enter my router, wireless router. So, so initially it, it, it is like open. It is like the default setting. So we will we will explain one by one, and we will now we will now uh, we will know how these three villains actually category work. So what my what his question was so initially these three belongs to villain one, right? But later on we will see that these three should not be the same one. So any question on this topology? Because I I I'll, I'll show this uh, topology and we'll go slowly from this topology. Uh, if we don't have any question. Sorry, I'm, I was uh, my power just there's power outage here, so I, I I got disconnected. I'm I'm connected now again. So can you hear me? Yes, sir. Okay, so let us go into the slide again. So so this is initially we we don't have any villain, right? So you all see this, right? <clears throat> so what we can do? Uh, let me show you. This is another example. You can see how many, how many, how many of, uh, how many, how many, how many switches are here? Three switches: S1, S2, and S3. And then we have three villains. You see, faculty villain, student villain. This is another example. I'm just showing you so that you can easily understand. Faculty villain is connected villain ten. There is another PC which is uh, connected to faculty villain 10. So green PCs are faculty villain 10s. And then student PCs are villain 20 and they are connected to uh, this uh, port, right? You see? And then we have another villain which is villain 30, which is this villain. Okay. And what what do you think? This is actually access port. There are there are actually two ports. Huh? So so any question? Somebody is raising a question. So you see this one, this port. This is actually trunk port. So we'll explain in a in a uh, in a way. So this is trunk port. Trunk port means this port. You see this port will have all the all the all the villain data, right? So 10 villain tens data, villain 20, and, and also other villain will go through this port. So that means this port will have the data of all the villains, right? But what about this one? What do you think about this port? Port zero by one. So this will have only villain ten, right? Do you agree with me? This will have only villain ten data, right? And what about this port? This will have villain twenty data. So this port for uh, with, uh, for the for the switch, you see the switch has villain uh, if a zero by one. Which which have only one uh, villain data, which is villain ten. That means switch have this this port is actually access port. Access port means which which can carry only the data of one villain. So this is another port. The other port is if a zero by two for the switch, and it can only carry the uh, data for villain twenty. This is also an access port. Do you understand the difference between access port and the uh, let me ask you. Let me repeat the process. So, so if a switch have port like zero by one, if it's zero by one, which can have data of villain only one villain, that means that port is known as access port. This port belongs to villain ten. This port belongs to villain twenty. So, this is access port. This is access port. But what about what about this port? This port means gigabit zero by one. 
what about this code? This code will have to carry both VLAN 10 and VLAN 20 data. So that means this port, this port is not access port. This is actually trunk port. Do you get my point? Any questions so far? So if there is no question, we now know the difference between access port and the uh, trunk port, right? Can you hear me? So now we understand the difference between access port and trunk port. So, so let me let me show you this example again. So what about this port? This port switch have three ports, right? What about this port? This this port is F0 by 11. So this port is actually VLAN 10. So this is access port. This is another access port which is which belongs to VLAN 20. And you see this one, the last one, the purple one, which is which is which which is F0 by 6, then this port is also belongs to VLAN 30. So we can I'll show you how to configure a VLAN. Okay. So before that, let me let me explain the trunk port again. A trunk link carries more than it carries data of more than one VLAN. So as we, we saw, a trunk port will have the data of different VLANs at the same time. So a trunk port is usually established between switches. So we, we remember there are two switches and the link between the switches is actually trunk port. So this one is a switch, this one is a switch, you see? This one is a switch and this one is a switch. And the line between this switch is the is a trunk so this is what we, we, have, we have seen. A trunk port is usually established between the switches. A trunk port is not associated with any VLAN. That means it is not for any VLAN. Rather, it is, it is, it is associated with all the VLANs. Okay, and another thing is that normally the, the trunking protocol, there is a, a popular trunking protocol which is used for, uh, to, for communication through the trunk port. So, which is you have to know this uh, protocol IEEE 802.1Q. This is a, a standard trunking protocol uh, used by Cisco and other other devices. And since we are using uh, packet tracer, so this protocol is needed for trunking purpose. So, for communication between this trunk port, we need 802.1Q. Somebody is saying. Uh, we can work without trunk port. Yeah. So your your point is right, but the point is that we uh, actually we are not supposed to con be confined. Kazi Mafuza, right? Uh, okay, Mafrufa, Mafrufa. And I think I think the the problem is that we are not we should not be confined in one room. Rather, we will have uh, PCs in different lands, right? So you see, this one is say, say this one is one room, and the other this one is another room. So we must have switches in one room, and then we have, we'll have another switch in another room. So there will be uh, switches in different room which needs to be connected through a trunk port. So I think you you got my answer, right? Did you get my point? Not your point. Did you get my point? Okay, so it would be better if you can ask question more. So I think I think trunk port is clear, right? You see this one. So can you tell me how many trunk ports we have here? You see between switch two and one, this one, this one. You see switch one and switch two. This should be trunk port, right? This one. And also between switch one and switch three, this one, this one. You see this one, right? Uh, you see this one, this one, this one should be trunk port, right? And this one, this one should be trunk port, right? Got it? What about this one? What? Uh, sorry. What about this port? Is this is this trunk port or access port? This must be access port, right? And it should be access port. Uh, which is assigned to VLAN 10. And this one should be VLAN 20. This one should be VLAN access port for VLAN 30, right? I think you all understood. 
let me wait for one second or some time. Any questions so far? I think yeah, as somebody uh, Abu Hanif. Thank you, Mr. Abu Hanif. Okay, so so now the topology is clear. Is, is the topology clear? This topology. This is a generic topology, and I think you you can draw this figure or some other figures. So this 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 figure is clear, right? We have trunk port. We have trunk port. We have access port. Access port. Access port. Same thing here. Access port. Access port. Access port. Good. Okay. Fine. Okay. Let me go forward. Uh, so, so there is one thing. Villain tagging is another thing. Okay. So villain tagging. There is a new term. I think you don't understand. Maybe you don't know. Uh, we have a term. VLAN tagging. So VLAN tagging is uh, something like when you when you place any packet. So this is this 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 line is actually VLAN tag, right? But when you place any switch, let me make it clear. So when we place any packet here. We have to say this is a trunk line, right? When you place any packet in this line, so we have to tag. We have to make a make some. Uh, make, we have to give some sticker on on this on each packet. So we have to put a sticker. Say if it is it whether if it is a packet from uh, VLAN 10, so we have to put a sticker which is VLAN tag, and we have to say that this is the packet of VLAN 10. Because because any 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 packet can be of billion twenty or billion ten or whatever, so that's why we have to put a sticker, something like this. So that sticker is known as billion ten. So if it is billion ten, we have to put it billion ten. If it is billion twenty packet, then we have to say it is billion twenty sticker. And so we have to put sticker. If it is billion thirty, then we have to say it is billion thirty, right? If it is billion ninety nine, we have to put it billion ninety nine tag. So this is what. Uh, we are going to say here. So can you see this? So let me show you again. Frame tagging is the process of adding VLAN identification header to the frame. So this is used transmit uh, to properly transmit multiple VLAN frames through a trunk link. So do you understand the second line, second point? It is this this VLAN tagging is used to properly transmit multiple VLAN frames because this trunk link is not, not for one villain, so it will have multiple villain frames. So to distinguish between multiple villains, we have to have some stickers, which is known as villain sticker or villain tag. So the so villain tag is identified villain tag. So I, I told you that we have a we have a very popular protocol which is 802.1Q. I typically what 802.1Q is responsible for villain tagging purpose. So what happens is that you see the this part switches the switch one so let me show you again switch one is switch the first switch when it is placing the packet the frame in this trunk port so before placing the 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 frame on the trunk port you see switches add pillar tag for placing into the trunk line and then the other other switch which removes the tag before putting it in the non trunk port. So that means the, the VLAN tagging will be done. So VLAN tagging will be done in this port, and then that packet will, the frame will go through this one, this line, and then it will be, it will reach switch two, and switch two will remove the tag. So, so this, let me show you again. The first switch, this switch will add the VLAN tag. Add the sticker or add the tag. So after that, it will go through the trunk link, and then the second switch, it will remove the tag. Do you get my point? So remove the sticker or remove the tag. Understand? So there will be villain tagging and untagging. So tagging will be done in the first switch, and the other side of the trunk line will remove the tag. Now, if you have any question in real time, yes, yes, sir. Some questions. 
Uh, yes, how so, villain videos broadcast traffic? Uh, okay, uh, I'll not uh, talk about broadcast. Uh, actually, yeah, today. Uh, Somebody raised the hand. I'm not sure. And sir, another question is why switch one used rather creating trunk line between. So let us talk about this S1 and S2 topology. You see this one is uh, adding the tag and the other side of the trunk line will actually remove the tag. So I think we can we can consider it here. It's very simple. Adding tag and removing the tag. And and actually, then after that, the switch will, if it is packed from this VLAN, it will, it will send from this, uh, through this VLAN. And we don't need any VLAN, uh, VLAN tagging because it is already, it, this code is, is for only for VLAN tag. So we don't need any tagging here. So I think it, it answers the question. Any any other question? Okay, let me show you one thing. Um, okay, I think it, I, I can make it clear when we so, so show the configuration. Uh, it's uh, we'll show the configuration in, in in ten or fifteen minutes later. Okay, but before that, let me show you what happens here. You see. This is actually Ethernet frame. I think you all know this is Ethernet frame. Uh, destination MAC. So the data from network layer, you see data. Um, wait, wait, wait. You see data, right? You see data, right? So data from network layer, and then we we have some uh, we have some uh, we have some header, which is Ethernet header, and then Ethernet header has source MAC destination MAC, right? Source MAC destination MAC, and then frame chip sequence is the uh, frame trailer, right? So uh, wait, wait. So. So you see, in between this one, between between type length and source mac, something is being inserted. This is actually VLAN tag. So you see, extra extra thing is included, which is actually two bytes. VLAN tag is a some extra sticker on the on the Ethernet frame here in here. You see, this is actually two byte tag, which remain which which has uh, these uh, bit patterns, two bytes, actually four bytes. So, so you see Ethernet type, and then we have we have VLAN identifier. So we can concentrate here. We will have VLAN identifier. So if it is VLAN ten data, so this ten will be put here. So if it is VLAN twenty data, so the twenty will be will be here. So the sticker will have twenty here. So I think you understand how VLAN tagging is done. So. So another thing is that if someone is native villain, so I didn't explain what is native villain. So let me explain what is native villain. If someone is in Bangladesh, okay. So do you think Bangladeshi people need to uh, carry the passport while in, in, in their own country? So this is our own country and we can we can say that we are native, right? But if somebody is from say, say China or say India or Nepal or Bhutan, they need to carry their passport in 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 foreign country like Bangladesh, right? So this is actually foreign, uh, and then uh, we can say Bangladeshis are actually native. So so similar concept. So so for VLAN, we can declare one VLAN to be native, and then the other VLANs will, will not be not, will be will, will be non-native, right? So we want to give priority for the native VLAN. So native VLAN will not be tagged. Please read this line. What does it say? Frames that belong to the native villain will not be tagged. So if it is not the native villain data, so it will be tagged. So we want to give 
priority to native VLAN data so that they are not tagged and untagged. Just like what I showed here. I showed, I told you that in this figure, switch one will add the tag or sticker and then switch two will remove the sticker. But for native VLAN, there will be no tagging and then there will be no untagging. Do you get my point? Any question? Regarding native sir, VLAN. One, sir, just, uh, not native VLAN. Sir, just another question. Is the trunk port full duplex? Yeah. Trunk port will be full duplex. Yeah. So, so actually, it's, it depends on the switch. But we can consider that this is actually a trunk port. And we can say that switch one can send packet to the switch two, and switch two can also send packet to the to the port. So it is it is actually it can it, it's normally a duplex port. So so send and receive is possible. So it's not simplex. It's it's actually full duplex. Yeah, we can consider it full duplex. So it's a similar thing. So what I just said, if it is sent from this side to this side, the same thing will happen. Tagging this side and untagging this side. So tagging will happen here, and then untagging will happen here. Okay, same thing. So just, just you can make it reverse. So if it is just opposite, then tagging will happen. Which side will tagging happen? S2 will tag and then S S1 will untag, right? Okay. Any other? I think somebody's having some good chance. Okay. So so why do we need Villa? I already told in the first slide. So if we can have VLANs, we can have one switch, but we can have people from different department in the same room, right? So my question is, if we want to allow people in the same lab or in the same room or in the same facility under a switch, we can we should have VLANs so that their data are segregated and they cannot see data from of other department. So if you say so let me answer the question again. If we say this is actually a faculty PC and then this is a student PC, if we can segregate their data, then student will not student will not receive the data of faculty members, and faculty members will not receive the data of the student uh, population. So we can segregate data from different group under the same switch, which is possible in Berlin. I think you understood my answer. Okay, so now the same question came. Just uh, what we just said. What about native villain? You see, native villain. Native villain, actually, we have to give somebody advantages, right? So who should I give advantages? Like in the road, in, in the in the in the traffic. You see, people move, but there are some emergency vehicles, right? So emergency vehicle like the fire truck and then the police car and the ambulance, right? These are actually a high priority vehicles and we want to get them higher priority. So similar to that, when we, we, we think there are some traffic in the network which will have higher priority than the others. Uh, so those will be those will be in the native field. So let me give you another example. So I told you there are two villains and if we have another villain for switches, right? The switch, switch themselves, switch themselves belong to another villain, which is say 99. Okay, so we have two villain, villain 10, and then villain 20, and then okay, wait, wait. So we have switch, switch 99. Say, say 99 is a villain, which is which uh, which is belongs to switches, right? So so let me show you again. So this is say this is 99.2, and this is say 99.1. So we, we can assign we can assign VLAN IP, right? So let me show you again. I, I'll show you in details, but still I can show you. So so we can assign 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 IP address to switches like just like this. Okay. So I'm trying to say we can have switch IP and then we can assign IP address to those switches, and then these switches can communicate as native VLAN. So if 99 is the native VLAN, what will happen? Native villain data will not have villain tagging, right? 
native VLAN data will not have any tagging. So switches will communicate among themselves faster way, in a faster manner, right? So it, just like police car or, or, or any ambulance, the communication between switch one and switch two will go untapped. So this will help them communicate faster. So again, VLAN 10, VLAN 20, they are normal VLAN, but VLAN 99 will be native VLAN so that they can communicate without any VLAN tagging. Do you get my answer? Somebody just told me the answer. Okay, so, so let me, uh, okay. So I, I, I'll go forward and I, I will show the configuration and then I think you, you will understand uh, more clearly. Uh, let me go further. So this is actually VLAN. Uh, we are done with uh, some critical part. Now let me show you the VLAN uh, ranges. So VLAN, VLAN configuration, before uh, we start VLAN configuration, we have to know what are the what are the possible ranges for VLAN, okay? So as you can see, there are actually a VLAN uh, are possible from one to uh, 4096. So we have we can have uh, this number of VLANs. So normally we can have uh, VLANs between zero to uh, one to uh, one thousand five. One to one thousand five is the normal series, but we can have one thousand six to four four zero nine six, which is known as extended VLAN. So the details uh, VLAN details are actually kept in somewhere in the memory. So these VLANs the details are kept in VLAN dot dot, which is in the flash memory. So you have to write it down. VLAN dot dot is is a file which which keeps the VLAN information in the flash memory. And the extended VLAN information are actually kept in the NVRAM. So I think you know what is flash memory and what is NVRAM. So I'm just skipping this, this part. So before going into the uh, details, we have to know how to create a VLAN. So let me show you again in this in this one. You see this uh, actor cell. So as you can see. Let me see this. So let me write this command. Uh, so you can write this command later on. So this is show villain brief, and we can see there are villain one, and then we have all the ports of a villain in the same same villain. So it all these ports belong to the same villain one. Okay. So now how to how to create a villain? So now we want to create a villain ten, and then we want to create another villain twenty. So if we say VLAN, VLAN 10, so VLAN space 10, we have to go to the config terminal and then we have to say config, uh, VLAN 10 and then this is actually ID, say 10, so VLAN 10 and the name, say faculty, okay, something like this. So I'm showing you, you can follow me. So we don't have any other VLAN, we have other VLANs, uh, 1002, 3, 4, 5, 6, these are actually default VLANs for uh, for different protocol purpose like ABDI, uh, which is actually layer two protocols. So uh, these are actually not created. This is actually by default. There are these VLANs are actually created internally. So so let, let us go into the details config terminal. And then what we should do? We have to create VLAN pen, right? So we have two VLANs. Say we have two VLANs, VLAN pen, and then we can have name the faculty. So VLAN pen belongs to faculty members, and then we can have another VLAN, VLAN twenty. And then name the students. Okay. So this is what I tried to do. Then we can have another villain, villain 99, and then we can say name management. How many villain we, we, we have just created? We created three villains, villain 10, villain 20, villain 99 with three different names. So you can write it down. This thing you can write it down. Okay. Okay. I think now, so initially we don't see 10, right? Do you see 10, 10, 20, 30, 10, 20, 99? Initially we didn't see 10, 20, 99, right? Now, if we say exit and then and then we can exit and then we say show VLAN brief, what will happen? Now you see this three. 
we just created villain 10, 20, and 30, and each of villain has a name. Uh, these names are faculty, students, and management, right? You say this. Can you hear me, right? You can see it, right? Hello. Yes, sir. Okay. So, so, okay. So, so now, let me show you again. Let us configure this. Uh, configure this one. I'm just showing it again. I'm just making it clear so that you can. You can stream it. So, so okay. So now you see this. This switch have we have already created villain in this in this. Uh, in the switch one, and the same thing I have to do in the same uh, in the in switch two, right? Do you think I have to do it in 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 both switches, right? So let me show you in the same command. We can I can type the same command, or I can I actually have written this command here. So you see this this command. So I can just copy this command, and then I can paste in the switch. Okay. You see, this is another switch. If you don't understand, you can I can change the name of the switch. Let's say this is switch two. Say source name was S2. So this is S2, right? And I can paste the same command. So now you see VRAM 10 20 99 is in this switch. Okay. And then I can I can come out. Actually, I'm doing the same thing in, in both the switches. So if I say show VLAN brief. We have just did it in the switch one. So you see, this is switch two, and we have three different villains in switch two as well. Do you understand how to create villain? I think you understand how to create villain. So let me show you the slide again. So we can create villain in uh, in this command, right? Using this command, villain one. We run at villain ID, so this is how we can create. Now we can see the we can see the com, we can see the uh, uh, what we can see the villain information using this command show villain view. So so every time we want to see what are the villains, we, we have to use this command show villain view in the in the hash mode, right? In the hash mode. Okay. Now let me show you again. Next is you see this one we have we have this switch right, but we have we have a we have a port zero by one right. Do you see this port number? So this port actually belongs to VLAN ten. Right? This port belongs to VLAN ten right. I have to I have to I have to assign this port in access mode, and how to do this? I have to I have to use this FA zero by one access mode. We have to make it access mode switch uh, port, and then I have to assign it to VLAN ten. So this is VLAN. This port should belong to VLAN ten, and this port, the FA zero by two, should belong to VLAN twenty. So how to do this? Let me show you the command. Assigning port VLANs. So I have to use config terminal, and then I have to go to the interface. Uh, actually, yeah, this is you see this one. So this one S1, and this is port F is zero by eighteen. So zero by eighteen, and then I have to write this command: switch mode, switch port mode access, and then switch port access VLAN twenty. So this is actually assigning this port to VLAN twenty. So you can write it down. You can write this these commands. How to assign a port to a access VLAN. So now our task is to assign this port to VLAN. So we have to go to config terminal interface. What? What interface? Anyone? FA zero by one. You see this? You see this port, this port is this switch, this PC. 
pc0 is connected to fp0 by 1 so i have to go to fp0 by 1 and then i have to say switch port mode access and then i have to say switch port access vlan but not 20 right it read these three lines yeah somebody is asking question yeah somebody might might have raised the hand so let, let, let me take a few questions yeah so one one villain tag yeah so i think somebody asked a question that how many villain tags so one villain tag should be at most one villain tag then any other question okay so did the, did you did you did you get the get this uh, in commands right so i can show you in other other one uh, let me show you here so you have to do like this okay you see this you see this so if it is for port 1 first port is for vlan 10 and the next port vlan uh, this one is actually for vlan 20 right you see this? You understand this too? Let me go slowly. Uh, you can write these uh, commands in your in your script. I think you got my uh, question answer. So let me show you one more thing. When I, you see, there is this is VLAN 10, and then there is no port assigned. We don't see any port assigned, but we already have done this, right? So this port 0 by 1 should be assigned to VLAN 10. Let me show you. Let me show you. You see, we say show VLAN VIP. Okay, you see this? So now it says VLAN 10. And this port FA0 by 1 is assigned to VLAN 10. So VLAN 10 is assigned to is assigned to this port. So this port is assigned for a access VLAN. But the next port, like this one, FA0 by 2 should be assigned to VLAN 20. This is not done yet. So I have to write the command, this, this command, right? This command. So I, I'll put this command, right? In the script before that, I have to go to config terminal and then I can test. You see, I, I just tested. Yeah, so this one actually will make VN20 VN20 will have FA0 by 2, right? FA0 by 2 will be assigned to VN20. So let me show you now again. So VN brief, I am using the same command again and again. So you see, you see this one. Any question? You see this? You see, please, please check. So we have two ports assigned to two VLANs. Number port number one is assigned to VLAN 10, port number two is assigned to VLAN 20. You see this? So how did we do this? Uh, we just do it like this. We just use this command. We just use this command. This command and then this command. Okay. Let me wait here for one or two minutes. If you have any question, I'll answer. This is actually command. Switch port is a command. So this is actually command format. So access mode is the mode, and this is command format. So just, just consult it here. This is actually access mode. This is access mode. And we are assigning access mode VLAN. So the same thing I have to do, right? Do you agree, right? The same thing. You see this one, this switch has the same. You see, VLAN, VLAN 0 by 1 is port 10, uh, VLAN 10, and then port number 2 should be VLAN 20, right? 
So I have to use the similar type of command here, right? So the similar command actually. So I'm just putting the same command and just copying this thing. You see, I'm just copying this into to this one. Okay, this is the second switch. And then if we say if we again we can check, uh, we have already uh, show we then do right? You see? You see this one? But but what we didn't do? Did we get make it trunk? It, okay, we have to make this code trunk, right? So gigabit zero by one, I have to make it trunk, and then for this one, I have to make it trunk. So the problem is that uh, uh, we have to we have to decide which port we want to make uh, 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 native. So what we can do, we can consider, we can think a VLAN, VLAN 99. Say VLAN 99 is for switches. We'll, 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 uh, we'll, we'll, we'll assign IP address. So let me assign IP address like this. I think you know this, right? Do you know we can assign IP address to a switch like this? Is it known to you? I'm not sure whether you know this. Anyone from the moderator, like, do, does this student know that a switch can have IP address? Anyone? Hello. Yes, sir. Uh, we have already shown there the campus network and uh, to uh, to VLAN network we have already created and show this type okay. of assignment. Okay. Okay. So I think we can we can you see you see I can I can assign IP address to this VLAN uh, VLAN 19. So so what I'm saying that uh, we can configure IP address to a switch like you see interface VLAN 99 and then we can assign IP address IP address. 192 say 168.99.2. This is actually say 99.2. And then we can say a certain mask. And then we can say no shutdown. So this is the IP address of the switch, right? I think you understand how to configure IP address to a switch. So similar thing I can do it here. So I can I can do I can go to this switch and I can type IP sorry VLAN. Page VLAN 99. Then I can say IP address 192.168.99.3. And then 255, 255, 255. And then solution. So now, actually, what we do is we have, we have a switch here and it has an IP address now. You see? You see the switch has an IP address VLAN 99. You see that? Switch IP address uh, 99.2 and this one, this switch is also IP address 99.3. So, so now let me show you the command of how to make a trunk port. So, so this is actually I already showed. I don't want to show it again. So similar thing I already showed in the class. And then yeah, we'll we'll see we'll show, we'll see we'll we'll see how to delete villain. So we have to we have to go to the config and then just write no. Uh, in front of VLAN 20 or VLAN 10, it will, it will just delete the VLAN. So VLAN 20 will be gone. If you see this. What about, uh, we already see uh, that we can check the, each, each of the VLAN. Uh, yeah, we can we can see this command, we can take the command. So VLAN name, so we can take this. So VLAN name and then say student or faculty. So you see, it says it's VLAN 10, so faculty VLAN is 10, and then other details. Okay, and it's it's assigned to port zero one. So we can we can check which which port which uh, VLANs are assigned to which port. So let me go into the trunk trunk configuration. Okay, so to do the trunk configuration, we have to go to the interface and then say we have to say switch mode mode trunk. This is the line. The configuration is switch port mode access. It was earlier it was switch port mode access. Now it is switch port mode trunk. And then we have to say switch port trunk native villain. We have to identify if we if we have to specify any uh, native villain, we have to say switch port trunk native villain say one or native villain 99 and or something like that. Switch port trunk allowed villain the villain list. So let me let me give you the example here. You see this one. You see this one? Hello. Okay. 
Can I see this? In our case, we can we can type this, right? So we can make uh, gigabit zero by one trunk, and then we can say native ninety nine is our native villain, and then we can say that we have three villains, 10, 20, and ninety nine. We want to allow all of them, right? Through that trunk line. So this allowed means if we if we if we drop say twenty, if we if we don't type this, what will happen? So twenty will not be allowed, right? You see this? And if we list all our allowed villains, then actually all the villains will be allowed to the trunk line. So we can we can put this. Did you write this? Please write it down. Please write it down. Because I will paste it. I will paste it in the two switches. So I, we have two switches. One is switch one, and then other is switch two. And actually, I'll I'll put uh, this in this. So we have to go to config key, and then you see, we have to. I can I can make the make it switch one. So this is actually switch one, and then we'll actually paste it. So uh, whatever. Switch port. Uh, sorry, sorry, the, the line was wrong. Sorry, so the, I think there is something wrong. It's switch port. So, this is switch port. Sorry. So the, there is some silly mistake. Typo. So, so let me paste it again. So I am just pasting the last two lines, and then you see uh, something is going on. But do you think I have to put it here or I have to put it in both the sides? So this is also uh, gigabit zero by one. So I have to put it in the other line also, right? So I have to uh, I have to copy the same thing. You see, I have to copy the same port, same thing. The other switch, which is the switch two. So I'm I'm putting it in the switch two, config mode, and yeah. So now, so. What what we did, we make this port one access mode, port two access mode, and then the gigabit that gigabit port trunk mode, right? Same thing for switch two. This is access. This is access. This is access. This is trunk. Any question so far? Access, access, trunk, and then this one. Access, access, trunk. Okay, let me show you here. Let me show you here. You see this? Access, access, trunk. Please write it down. If you have not written, just write the command clearly. And also, if you have any question, <clears throat> I can answer. <coughs> Sorry. So no question yet. Okay. So so now you see. Uh, every everything is uh, shown good. Uh, okay. The next thing is actually actually we have to give IP address. So I have assigned IP address statically already. So you, this is 10.10. .10, you see, this is 10 network. Uh, you see 10.10 .10 already shown here. 10.10. .10. And this is 10.11. So we are having this 10.11 and 10.10. .10. So these two, this one and this one actually belongs to the same LAN, and this one and this one belongs to the 20 LAN. So you see 20.10. And I assign the IP address statically 20.10. And then I think it's simple. You can assign IP address 20.11. So so now what can we do? We can we can ping, right? You can see. So we can go to the simulation mode and then we can say, you see, right? So let me show you here. You see this one, this one, what will happen? 
So packet comes to switch one, switch one. So switch one actually makes the VLAN tag. Actually, you can see VLAN tagging here. You see, you see dot one Q, you see that dot one Q, that means there is a VLAN, uh, VLAN tagging. And then you see the packet is coming back and then it is going back and then tag will be removed by the switch and then it will go back to the PC zero. You see? You see this? Again, let me show you. So if we if we if we if we ping here from here to here, so it becomes successful. That means we are actually successfully reaching this one. So do you think this switch will uh, actually ping the other the, the, this PC? This PC can ping this PC. It fails. What does it mean? Can we can we send packet from one villain to another? We cannot. So this one actually we will we, we'll learn more about inter VLAN. So this is VLAN inter VLAN. You see, today we, we learn all everything is within the VLAN, right? So within the VLAN means inter VLAN. Tomorrow, next class, tomorrow we learn inter VLAN. So we have we can tomorrow we, we will learn how to transmit packet from one VLAN to another VLAN, which is inter VLAN routing. So it is tomorrow, okay. Tomorrow's class. Actually, we will need router tomorrow's class. So for that, we will need router. You see, today we don't have any router. You see, tomorrow we will need, need router for the routing between one villain to another. Okay. So we will not learn about inter villain today, but we can check. Okay. Okay. Let me show you again. So we can we can try to ping here to here, but it will not work. You see, all failed. So let me see again. Let me show you again in simulation mode. You see. Wait. Wait. I can show you here. This one. This one. Okay. So you see. Wait. Wait. Sorry. Real mode, right? Let me show you in simulation mode. So it actually it it cannot send. It cannot send from this point to this point. Okay. So so the packet cannot be sent from uh, it fails. Okay. So it cannot be sent from one so one villain PC to another villain PC. In fact, it cannot be sent from this PC to this PC. It will actually fail. So you can see again here. This PC to this PC, it fails. It fails. Okay. So, so we see that we have we have successfully connected VLAN 20 PC to VLAN 20 PC, and then you see again VLAN 20 to VLAN 20, it's successful. Again VLAN 10 to VLAN 10, it is successful. Right? So we can have same thing here from here, and then we can ping from here to here. Successful. So, so VLAN 10 to VLAN 10, VLAN 20 to VLAN 22, we are, we are having successful result. But uh, for VLAN 10 to VLAN 20, it's not successful. It's, it, it's actually failure. Did you get my point? Everyone clear? Again, we just learned a few things. We learned hmm. this command and then we learned... All clear, All clear learned sir. Okay, so good, and and then we actually we, before that we we make this okay. Okay, let me show you one more thing. You see this one? Uh, I have to show you one more. Thing. You see, show villain dot. Sorry, we have actually we can we can we can uh, delete some villain. Okay, so say no villain twenty. What will happen? What does it mean? So we are deleting VLAN 20, okay? We don't want to delete it, but if we delete, then there will be no VLAN 20. So let, uh, let me show you again. We have VLAN 20, and actually it is assigned to VLAN. This is a port, right? So if we delete, then this VLAN will not be there, and then there will be no magnitude. 
another thing is that i'll not show but i'll, I'll give you the command if you want to if you want to uh, you see uh, show villain dot dev let me click uh, no it's not showing actually show flash you see, if you say show flash actually you see we are inside the flash you see show show flash so let me let me do it I'm I'm writing show flash. That means I want to see the content of the flash. So this, this is the directory of the flash, and then there is a binary file which is the uh, iOS. Right? This is the operating system binary file, and this is the villain dot. You see, so the villain dot that in the flash memory has the villain information. So if you want to delete the whole thing, so you have to write the command. Let me let me write the command. I don't want to delete now, but if you want to uh, delete all these things, you have to say delete. As colon villain dot there. So if you write this, what will happen? Uh, villain dot that in the flash drive will be deleted. That means no villain will be there. So so this will be gone. So you have to remember that if you reload without deleting this, it will not uh, the, uh, the the flash will be will have villain dot that. So you have to make sure that you deleted the flash flash villain dot that file and then reload otherwise if you don't delete it manually if you restart or reload the reload the switch then you uh, that 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 will be actually uh, that will be in your memory so so you have to make sure you have to delete this file first delete all the villains i'm not deleting but if you want to delete you can check it by deleting this okay Okay, let me go you here. So I think I have explained this right. I, I, I have explained this thing, right? And then actually you can also reset the trunk mode. So if you want to if you want to withdraw the trunk, but if you want to re remove the trunk mode, then you can just make a no use a no command and then you can do the same thing. Use a no command which will actually make make it default. So so also you can make it access mode so so every command if you have you are into withdraw the previous command you can make a uh, make a no command and then you can withdraw the previous command so so every time you want to withdraw a command you can use a no just be, before the command okay okay so let me uh, discuss some of the thing about uh, uh, I am almost in the same at the last part. So if we we have to be very sure if we if we mismatch the villain. So so what happens? Let me show you. Say say we have two switches, right? So switch one I have said villain ninety nine is the transform, and then in the other switch I I make it say villain one. So do you think it will work? So one side it says ninety nine. Another side it says one. Do you think this will work? So we have to we have to have the same native villain in the two part of a of a link. So we have to make sure that we, we don't we, we don't mismatch the native villain. So so we have to make sure that the two parts two side of the trunk port should have the same native villain allowed villain. So so this has to be the same. Otherwise it will be it will be in trouble. So another thing is that normally we should not keep villain one always because villain one is by default. So we should change it to some other villain. And also, if we don't uh, use any port of a switch, we should uh, we should turn off the switch. Like you, we should we should shut down the port that by administrative command. Also, we should uh, segregate the management villain with traffic villain. So already I, I have shown you. That we have two different villains. Uh, 10, 20 are actually user uh, data traffic, and management villain is actually the other traffic says say, villain 99. And and also there are other recommendations like we should use except we should use SSH rather than telnet, and also auto negotiation should not be enabled. Okay, I'm almost uh, at the end of my uh, talk. Uh, I will I will start some other thing which you will need uh, to tomorrow's class. So I'll I'll just show you a few things. So uh, so should I stop or should I stop it later? So let me let me let me just show you the other thing. 
we'll use this um, uh, not today tomorrow we'll, we might use this dhcp command so actually you know ip addresses can be assigned uh, dynamically and statically so i have already shown you can assign ip address like this and you can also select dhcp so if you use dhcp then that means somebody is actually giving you the ip address right can you hear me yes sir so ip address can be assigned statically and also dynamically so 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 dhcp works like this so this is the client you see the client sends a message which is called a dhcp discover message and then actually the server sends the ip address and there are other two messages which is request and reply request and acknowledgement i'm just not going into the details i'm just showing that dhcp dhcp operations happens and then there are four messages between the DCP client and the server. So this is discover, offer, request, technology. So you can write the commands, uh, uh, messages, discover, offer, request, acknowledgement. So all these messages, uh, and then after this message, the client will have an IP address. So this is the format of the message. And actually what happens, the server not only gives the IP address, it can send other, other informations like, uh, so, Server actually sends uh, IP address as well as some other messages. Let me show you those. Uh, okay, so you see, the server actually can send IP address and also default gateway and DNS address and other 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 information. And so, so you see, gateway address, client hardware address, server name, boot file name. There are other thirty-two parameters. That's actually TCP server can send back to the client. But how to configure? Because we will need this configure tomorrow. So I just wanted to show this configuration today so that we can use it tomorrow. So actually, you see, a router can be configured as a DHCP route, DHCP server. So what I'm saying, if we have a say, if we have a router here in this network, say we have a router here somewhere. This router can serve as a DHCP server. So we can have a machine or server machine as DHCP server. I can show you here. You see this? You see this server? Can you see this server, right? So you can you can you can use this and then you can on the server. You see, you see DHCP service you can on. So this is one way. You can you can you can assign the IP port. You see the pool name. You see pool name. Default gateway DNS server and then the start and IP and the IP address. Okay. So so this is one way we can have a server machine physically, and or we can have a router. You know this router, right? So this is a router. We can we can turn on a router, and we, this router can act as a DHCP server. And for this, we can use this command. You can write this command, and I can uh, show you here also. You see this. So I want to make sure that we can use this command tomorrow. That's why I'm just writing this command, you see. So, so each, you have to go to the config key terminal in a router, and then you have to say some of the uh, IP addresses should be excluded. Uh, why should we exclude any IP address? So, so, so if we have a, so let me say, let me say we have a, we have a network, okay. This network we have, we have to serve this, but in this network, we have printers, right? Do you think the printer should change the IP address? Do you think the printer should have a static address or dynamic address? Dynamic or static? It should be dynamic. It should not be dynamic, right? The printer should have a static address. So to make all those printers or servers use their static address, we have to exclude them from the DHCP pool. So that's why we have excluded, say, one to nine. Say one to nine, we are excluding. And then we are excluding to high type. So these are actually excluded. And then we actually make the pool. You see, this is actually a pool, and this is the pool name. And we are assigning, we are saying that the DSCP server, this is the DSCP server, which is actually we allocate IP address from this series 192.168.10.0/24. So it will start. What will be the first address? So the uh, DCP server will assign the first address 192.168.10.1 or 10. 
one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. This cannot be assigned because we, I have already excluded it. So the first address it will assign 10.10. .10. The next one is 11. The next one is 12, right? And so on. Then the last one is 25, right? So this is the DCP server. It can assign this address. So this is uh, this is the assignment of IP address. What about the gateway? So I have already said that this is the gateway address. So it will send this gateway address with this. And then we can also send DNS server and other information to the client, just like this one. So this is the configuration command. Actually, we'll use similar kind of command in the next few labs. So you can write this command from here. Okay. Okay, so somebody is asking what is DSCP? So DSCP is dynamic host configuration protocol. Actually, this is not about VLAN. Uh, yeah, I think somebody responded. Uh, yeah. So we can assign IP address statically or we can assign IP address dynamically. So let me show you again. So we can assign IP address. I can We can type the IP address here or we can assign DSCP. In that case, there must be a DSCP server which will send the IP address automatically to, to this PC. Okay. So this easy reduces the task of a network administrator. The network administrator does not have to reach all the machines physically to assign the IP address. Say if, if you have a lab of 100 machines and if you want to st statically assign the IP address, you have to go to each of the I machine and then uh, type the IP address, which is very, which is very tiring job, right? Okay, so this is the my end of uh, end of today's class. So actually, I, I I covered all the VLAN configurations. So we have already shown the benefits. We have already uh, shown how to assign static port and then trunk port, and then we have already shown how to check the configuration, and we have successfully pinged from uh, VLAN 10 to the other PC and also in the other lens VLAN 20. Uh, thank you, sir. Professor Shamsu Jaman is there? Yes. Okay, thank you very uh, much, sir, for your nice presentation. I think uh, uh, you will enjoy, uh, all of you enjoy tomorrow, our, our next class. So now I am sharing the assessment link. So uh, you can start your assessment by using this Google link.